And what happens when a man says, yes, you're the only one for me. I'm committed in this relationship. That is a prerequisite for women to go to higher levels of estrogen. You need to have that safety. Safety is the hormone oxytocin, which has been shown to lower women's stress levels. But safety is the foundation for a woman to depend on a man more. I'm looking to you to make me feel even better than I can feel on my own. And that's what a man can do. He can help a woman go from really good to great. And if I can help you go from good to great, then I just went from good to great myself. Not you doing it to me, it's you giving me the opportunity to take you higher. Always that polarity has to be there if you want to thrive in a relationship. Well, this is where the polarity goes wrong. Okay, so now he's made the commitment. That's a very masculine thing to do. She's like feeling, oh, good. Or I can depend on him. Her estrogen levels go up. But the problem is for men is once they, once they make that commitment, there's a feeling of, okay, I've done it. Mission accomplished. And after mission is accomplished, I get to go on vacation. You know, I did my day of work and now I can go rest. I don't have to do much. I'm going to do the big stuff. I'm committed to her, I'm thinking about marrying her maybe. So that's the big stuff. So if I'm doing the big stuff, I don't have to do the little stuff because he doesn't understand how powerful the little stuff is. And that's illuminated in one of the most popular concept, concepts in Men Are From Mars, which you're familiar with, is uh, on Venus, every act of love, big or small has the same effect. It's an act of love. And we put it in hormonal terms. I can bring her 50 roses. She's going to get a little surge of estrogen. Ooh, that feels good. I can bring her three roses, one rose, and she's going to have the same surge of estrogen. So that's a concept men have to understand is that bigger is not always better. It's bigger is good occasionally, but better is lots of little things and occasionally a big thing. That's that's a something men don't understand because you don't get paid in a business for doing a lot of little things. <laughs> You get paid for doing the big stuff. And women fall in love with you because you can do big stuff. But then men don't realize to keep it, you have to keep doing those little things that you did in the beginning. And you can do it better and easier. And that's what I'm teaching men to do. But so buddy, we're talking about what are men thinking. So what he's thinking is, all right, now I don't have to do much anymore to get your love. And you'll sense that he's doing less. And as a woman you will make the mistake of thinking, oh, if I just give him more, I will get more back. So you go into this phase of trying to make the relationship better by giving more support to him for whatever he's doing or not doing. And that does not cause him to bond with you. What ends up happening is you end up feeling I'm giving more and getting less, and then you will feel some resentment. And when you feel resentment, it sucks all the energy out of a man. Okay. The opposite of resentment is appreciation and gratitude. When you're feeling appreciation for a man, his testosterone goes up. If you're resenting a man, his testosterone goes down. And it already went down because he, he achieved his goal. And now it's time to rest and have a vacation. It's this cave time in a sense. So what women have to learn at that time is not to assume that the momentum, his motivation to please you will be the same. But it's still there in potential form. And the seed is there. What you have to do is water that seed and you water that seed by asking for things. So practicing, not over giving, not trying to please him, but starting to ask him to do things for you and be and be appreciative. That would be one of the hacks, uh, you know, for married couples to keeping the passion. Uh, there's all kinds of hacks I give, but one is is just simply every day you raise your hand, which says, I'm going to make a request that's less than five minutes. And. And if you, you discuss this, you say, you know, as a woman, I'm on my male side. I need more estrogen. It's not proven. I read this book, John Gray. What turns out that if, if I can ask you to do something little, less than five minutes, and you have an immediate response, like, you know, I said, the house is on fire and you say, I'll fix it. You know, I'll do it. I'm happy to do it. I'm glad to do it. I'll do it right away. If you have that little response and you know, it's only going to take five minutes. So it could be, would you get my oil and massage my feet? Yes, right away. And you run to do it. Any man will have, even if he's tired and you tell him it's only five minutes and it's going to be great foreplay, <laughs> which is raising estrogen. Once he understands that, I've never met a man who's not happy to do it. I'm not happy to do it. But she has to ask. You know, some men say, I'm always doing stuff for her. I said, well, then you're not going to get much credit for that because you're already doing it. This is something that she normally doesn't ask you to do. 
it's something that she could do for herself, but she doesn't have to do because you're glad and happy to do it for her. And so you're asking. Asking is the biggest estrogen stimulator because you're acknowledging, I need your help. And what do you need his help for when you ask him to give you a foot massage or make you a cup of tea or clean up the kitchen or empty the trash or fix the, remove the ladder from the garage, whatever it was, whatever little activity you have him do that you were going to do anyway for yourself, you ask him to do it. And he has an immediate response. Like almost every night, my wife says, oh, John, I already am tucked into bed, ready to go to sleep. She says, John, would you get some warm water for me? I'm thirsty. I don't know if she, <laughs> but I understand it's a little request. It takes less than five minutes. So immediately I, I have the energy to do it because I know it has such an impact on a woman when a man does a little thing for her, if she asks for it. It's very, very key. Uh, it's understanding men just don't know to do that stuff, but you, you train them by asking them to do little things and then you appreciate it. And he starts to learn that, wow, you know, I can get a lot of love for her without spending a lot of energy. It's just a very short, quick thing. Men are always conserving energy. We have a gene that basically says, never do anything you don't have to do. That's it. If I don't have to do it, I'm not going to do it. I don't have the energy for it. I'll wait for the emergency. We're the emergency workers. We always have been. We stand guard, ready to fight our battle, using no energy, keeping our energy intact. Women are not designed that way. Their brains never turn off. Their body, if they're actually relaxed, which is women used to be relaxed, they have 20 times more energy than a man because you have 20, 20, 20% more is, but actually the burning of fat actually gives you, you're born with more fat. You have more fat when your estrogen goes up and that fat, if you're relaxed, oxytocin is produced, you'll burn that fat producing 20 times more energy than sugar or than your muscle mass. So you have the potential to have unlimited energy. So you worked, have always worked 24 hours. Okay. Raising children and a family, <laughs> just like your brain doesn't turn off. Research shows women's brains don't turn off. You have a Harvard did a study showing women sit down, relax with electrodes on their head. Brain activity speeds up. Uh, ask her, what are you thinking? All the things I should be doing that I'm not doing because I'm sitting here doing the experiments. Your mind just doesn't stop. Man's brain put the same electrodes on, brain activity dramatically reduces. And you say, what are you thinking? Nothing. We, we, have, we have a different set of genes. Actually, we have all of your genes, uh, but at three weeks old, uh, we get these 23 genes from the Y chromosome and their function is to override our certain female genes inside of us. So there's a female gene inside of us that makes vaginas, instead it goes the other direction, makes a penis. Uh, another gene that will say to the brain, you know, uh, you have to be on all the time. Well, we have a, a gene that says if you work hard, you need uh, you need to forget the day in order to reduce stress. So you have energy for the next day. You can't be working all the time because your job usually was during the daytime. Where women's job is at night and day throughout all. And babies are always needing your attention. If you're your body that can make babies, you have the equipment to do it. But if you're stressed, you don't have the equipment to do it. That's the problem. So it's a big problem today as women are on their male side and how to be attractive to a man. And then the other side of it is how, how to be attractive where a man is attracted to you, but how to be attracted to men. That's what I hear the most of women in their 40s. Is I yeah, just, and beyond. Yeah. I, I just can't. Uh, there's no magic there. There's no juice there, you know? And then there's a few women who say, I want a man who'll sweep me off my feet, who's strong and powerful and all this stuff. I mean, and it's true. If I have a masculine man, it will help me feel more feminine, but that's your own job. You know, if you want to, if you want to have successful relationship, you have to start learning on your own, how to be more feminine, learning how to raise your estrogen levels, how to use a man when you're dating to increase your estrogens. 